Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Catherine and ooh, today's video, if I don't knock everything over, is actually going to be my April's reseller recap. So if that is something that you want to watch, well, I guess I should explain it first to decide if that's what you want to watch. Um, basically, I am a part-time reseller. Um, and so what I do, I find things at thrift stores or at a low price. I resell them for a higher price, yet still below market rates um, in order to make a profit. And that allows me to pay off some extra bills. It allows me to uh, put money towards student loans. It allows me to be able to go out to eat and have a date, all these extra things without being super financial strapped so and it's also my passion it's my hobby I like doing that I like being able to provide um, you know secondhand clothes to other people who may not have access to them and to just kind of extend the life of an item and so it doesn't go to waste basically um, so my reseller recap is I take all of my numbers from the month before, I do some analysis to it, and I provide you with totals, profits, highs, lows, side to sides, my notes about it to make me a better reseller, hopefully to provide some information to you to make you a better reseller or just to kind of teach you the ropes. So if that is something you want to watch, then please stick around. So as you can see from previous videos, I am in a new location. Um, I've, I've also stated this in previous videos. This situation right here, this is just real life reseller. It is. I'm trying to work on making it more aesthetically pleasing in the back, but how it is now is just how it is now. And we're not going to judge each other, okay? We're just not going to do it. That's how it, it's going to be covered with a picture anyway. So you, you won't see this too much. Um, but let's get into it. So we are going to be reviewing the month of April. I try to do this more towards maybe uh, the end of the beginning, the beginning of the middle of the month of the, the following month, um, just so I can make sure that there's like no returns that are coming through or anything like that. So these numbers are a lot more solidified um, than if I were to do it right at the end. So let's just get into brass tacks of everything. So for total sales, so the total number of money that people purchased, the the re or the value of the items that people purchased was two thousand two hundred ninety five dollars and sixty three cents. My total cost of goods, so the amount of money that I paid for all of the items that were sold this month, was eight hundred fifteen dollars and fifty cents. So given all of the fees on different multiple on uh, different sites that I sell on, which mainly it's Poshmark. Um, eBay, Depop, Mercari, Vistare, Facebook Marketplace. I will just, I'll tell you right now, uh, Vistare and Facebook Marketplace are like crickets. I mostly sell on Poshmark. Second one is probably, now that I think about it, I'm looking at my numbers because I forgot to add this. Typically, I like to break down all of the platforms that I sold on. We'll, we'll get to it because um, it wasn't too many this month. Um, it was basically Poshmark. So my total profit minus fees, mostly Poshmark fees, um, was $1,480.13, which if I check, um, I have my computer screen behind you. So that's where I'm looking. If I check from last month, that is about $150 more in profit that I made from the previous month, which is a lovely trajectory of numbers January sucked. February did better by January by doubling. March was better than February by doubling that. So obviously I didn't quite double March's numbers, but I still made more by $150. And you know what? I'm totally ecstatic by that. I always say I'm a part-time reseller. I do not have the utmost amount of time to uh, put towards this business because I do have a full-time job. Plus I do other side hustles within that realm. So if you didn't know, I'm a mental health therapist. Um, so I have a job, I have a full-time job as a mental health therapist, as well as I do side gigs with mental health therapy as well. Um, so that is my main focus. And then um, reselling is my side side hustle part-time. At this point, it's probably another full-time job. As much as I spend the other rest of my time doing it. It's a full-time job. Um, so I always say as a part-time reseller, the amount of time I put into it and the resources I have, I am totally comfortable around the $750 profit mark. Um, that is something I always said last year, but I feel how things are going. I'm, 
I want to say I'm bumping up my goal that I want to be more comfortable around the thousand dollar mark each month. So to become, you know, an extra 12 grand in my bank account every year is wonderful. Is that going to sustain somebody full time? Probably not. It wouldn't me. Um, but that's an extra $12,000 that I can put towards a lot of different things. Um, so I'm very happy about that. So I guess I am stepping up my game and my goal instead of 750, as I usually said, I am now changing it to a thousand. So I feel happier. So with that, I did succeed. If I can basically pay off my mortgage, I'm totally happy with that. That is pure profit money right there. So after going on that monologue of how much money I'm comfortable making, um, the total number of items I sold was 78 items, um, which compared to the month before, I actually sold more items uh, the, the previous month. So 91 items compared to 78 items. Uh, my average listing price was $30.50. My average cost of goods per item was quite a bit higher this month than it has been in the previous months. It is $10.46, meaning that I spent more money per item that sold within this month, um, which you'll see as to why that is the case when we get down to my, um, my highest profiting item. I just thought about that. I was like, why is it so high? You'll see why. Um, so my average profit per item is $18.98, so just below the $19 mark. So if we think about it like this, I'm basically paying an average of $10.50 in order to get uh, $19 back. Not necessarily the, the profit margin that I'm wanting, but again, these numbers are gonna be just slightly skewed due to one of the items that I purchased and sold. Um, so it kind of throws off my normal numbers. Sorry, was getting a call. I think I was getting a call from my uh, real, real consigner person. <laughs> I've never talked to them. Um, to be honest, they've never really been helpful. Um, totally digress. So then the average days to sell is about 41 days. So from the time that I list it or relist it um, to the day it sold is about 41 days. That number could be important to you if you're more of a seasonal, seasonal person who, you know, 41 days from now, well, we're almost going into summer within a month. So we would almost be going into the end of summer or fall. So that might be important for you to know. Um, so now that I'm looking at the breakdown of platforms I sold on. Okay. So I must've been referring to the previous one, but I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, five on Depop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven on Mercari. One, two, three, four on eBay. So as you can see, Depop, Mercari, eBay, right around the three, four, five mark, everything else is Poshmark. So I always like to review my lowest and highest profits too. Always starting with the lowest because we like to end with the highest, right? So I will put up pictures right here of the actual items I sold. So the first one is this and other stories cable knit sweater sold on Poshmark for a whopping $8. My cost of goods was $4.12. So I actually lost money on this one. I lost a dollar and nine cents on it. But you know what? I'm totally okay with that. And you know why? Because I have listed it so many times, countless number of times. Um, that I, I can't even tell you how many times I've listed it. If I were to go into my venue, it, it would probably tell me because I use venue. If you're ever interested in that, I would say that is one of the best paid for tools that I use within my business. I have other ones as well, but that definitely is on the top. It is uh, tax deductible too, since it's a business tool. Um, I'm not giving you tax advice. Definitely do not come to tax advice for me, but it is tax deductible. So, I relisted it so many times. It did sell within eight days of like the umpteenth time of relisting. So I don't know how useful that information is to you. Um, but the interesting thing about this particular item is that it had so much interest on different platforms, so much interest, yet 
no one purchased it. I mean, I've gotten, I've reduced it to $8 before and nobody, nobody was biting. So sometimes you just have to relist things multiple times. And honestly, I, I should have just donated it, redonated it, something like that, probably a while ago. Um, and this is why I like to keep track of how many times I've listed or relisted stuff because it is nice to know how long I've had an item. So anyways, it eventually sold. I hope the new person loves it. <laughs> the next lowest profit is, and I'm just going into ascending order, so the profits will be getting um, bigger. So the next one is an Orange Theory graphic racerback tank top, sold on Poshmark, also for $8. My cost of goods was $2, so I profited $1.03. Um, I had listed it more than five times. It was similar to the the previous one countless number of times but it did sell within four days of relisting it whatever amount of times my color coding system is only so advanced so once it goes gray I, I don't know how many times I've relisted it I do know that like if my my cells on excel um that's I, I use excel to keep track of everything if my cells are um unfilled then that's the first time listing it if they're green I've li listed it one relisted it once I should say if they are yellow I've relisted it twice mm -hmm. if they are red I've relisted it four times uh three times and if they are gray it is five times out. We're done. Um, so yeah, glad to get rid of that one. Another one that I've, gosh, this item I've had around even before. I think I had an Excel system of counting. This is an H&M Jacquard weave sheath dress sold on Poshmark for $10. Cost of goods was $3.50. I profited $1.53. I listed it, I think about four times. It was on its way to being grayed out because um, it sold within 139 days of relisting it for the fourth time. So it was on its way out as well glad it's off to a new home and then let's see we have two more the next one is a brooks launch 7 running shoe sold on poshmark for 15 dollars. my cost of goods was seven dollars and 99 cents i profited just under two dollars so one dollar 99 cents i had only listed it once and it sold within 66 days of listing um this one i i was so excited to find like brooks running shoes because I'd never found them before. I had heard that they do well. Come to find out they don't do that well. Only if they're like in pristine condition and these shoes were not necessarily in pristine condition. Um, I did check like the wear on them and I was like, you know what? I just haven't found them before. I'm going to list them. I definitely paid too much for these based off of how much they sold for. So just word to the wise, comps change all of the time. So continuously doing your own research. And then lastly, my highest, lowest profit. Um, this probably was in a recent um, thrift haul. Yeah, I actually think this was, um, when was this? I think this was my um, day in the life of a part-time reseller, if I'm not mistaken. I'll, I'll list it in one of these corners up here. Um, this was an Ursula Mascaro cow print calf hair square toe ballet flat. So that was very descriptive. It sold on Poshmark for $16. My cost of goods was $7.99. I profited $2.79 and I had only listed it once um, and it sold within 18 days of listing it for that first time. I'll kind of discuss more um, in a bit as to why some of these are lower price sales, especially on um, Facebook on, po on Poshmark. So now getting into some of my highest profiting sales, and you will kind of notice a trend that all of my lowest profiting sales were on Poshmark, but my highest profiting sales were on different platforms. Um, so my lowest of my highest profiting sale was this Zarina olive plaid button down top. It sold on eBay for $70 plus, uh, shipping. Um, so my cost of goods was $12, $12.50. I bought this at Buffalo exchange. Again, I spent way too much money on it given its condition. It wasn't fair use condition. I mean, there was pilling on it. It seemed a little bit faded. I was so excited to find the brand. I think it's um, Kay from Passports and Pizza Pies. She was talking about how that's such a great brand. I had never heard of it before, so I learned that from her. 
since I found it I was, like literally within like the next two days of watching her video about that um I will definitely have her link down below she she's a great uh reseller reseller slash youtuber um so anyways it did sell for $70 so I profited $55.26. It sold 78 days within the first time listing it. Um, I had disclosed all of it was in fair use condition. There was pilling. It was faded. All this kind of stuff. The eBay, eBay buyer was when they received it, they sent a message to me, which I, I guess I'm glad that they sent a message to me instead of giving me bad rating. But they said, hey, um, if I would have known it was in this condition, I wouldn't have purchased it. Like it didn't fit like it was supposed to. I'm sure it had shrunk, um, but they didn't. They didn't ask for measurements. So you know, I told them, and I, I apologized, and I said, hey, you know, I'm sorry, it wasn't up to your expectations. The uh, the condition was listed in the description as um i put f-u-c for fair use condition um and they said they weren't sure i, I put f-u-c um for fair use condition and i also put the you know like pilling fading stuff like that i always put why i rate it that way um and they said that they weren't aware of what that meant even though I had the description next to it. They also didn't ask for measurements. So if they would have asked for measurements of the sleeve length, they probably would have realized that it possibly had shrunk a little bit. So I try to be as open as possible in my descriptions. You know, again, that was a bad buy on my part. I guess I still looked out on um, reselling it and profiting that much. And, you know, they thanked me for, for being honest and responding to them and um, stuff like that. So just, I guess, lesson learned on both our parts. My next highest profit was these Aviator Nation Moto sweatpants. And I guess I should, I should thank Kay again, because I learned about this brand from her, which is why I love doing uh, reselling YouTube and watching reselling YouTube is because I've learned so much from other resellers that you may not know before or have never seen before. Um, so this was a pair of sweatpants. They sold on Poshmark for a hundred dollars. My cost of goods was $3.38. So I profited $76 and 62 cents. I had only listed them once and they sold within 11 days of listing it for that first time. So, um, if you can find Aviator Nation, which I thought I had another pair of Aviator Nation. I don't think I do. I don't know why I'm thinking I did, but I don't. Um, but if you do in your bio, you might want to get them listed. My next highest item was um, Tory Burch Miller Fringe Sandals. They sold on Poshmark for $100. My cost of goods was $2.43. Um, so I profited $77.57 and they sold within one day of listing for the first time. Um, so these I picked up at Plato's Closet. Um, they also might be in that video too. I can't, I can't remember now. They're all starting to meld together. Um, I picked these up at Plato's Closet. They were priced at $40 at Plato's. Um, but because I had like a 20% off or $20 coupon off of $60, plus I had brought in some personal items to resell it based and I brought other things there as well. Um, so it brought down my cost of goods to $2 and 43 cents per item. Would I still have picked them up at 40? Probably, probably would have, um, even if they still sold for a hundred dollars. So that would be doubling my money. So with Poshmark fees of 20%, so 20% of 100 is $20. So that would bring my um, my net profit to $80 minus cost of, cost of goods is $40. I probably still want to purchase them at $40, but I'm, I'm happy that I didn't buy them for $40. All right, my next highest profit, and we are we are getting to the big one, y'all. We're getting to the big one, so hang, hang on. Um, my next one was this a, a vintage pair of Emilio Pucci printed crystal slingback silver sandals. And if these are not the most Y2K thing that you've ever seen, I don't know what's up. Um, 
and I immediately knew that they were poochy um, due to the print. It just has that really distinct print that when I was at the thrift store, I actually, um, I went to a Goodwill down on 4th Avenue in, in Tucson, if you're familiar, and they have this like prom section that I normally probably wouldn't have gone into, but you know, I just ventured over there. I immediately saw them. I knew exactly what they were. Um, and Again, I've said this in previous videos too. I always have an inkling of where things are gonna sell and I knew it would sell on Depop. So these sold on Depop for $100. Um, my cost of goods was $6.39. And with all of the fees and whatnot over there, um, I profited $79.30. I forgot to say how many uh, days. Let me see if I can quickly find that. Um, these sold in. I gotta look behind you. Hold on, hold on. These sold in with nine days of the first time listing it. So pretty cool. Now let's get into the uh, the piece de resistance, if you will. My highest profiting sale of this month, and my highest profiting sale ever as a reseller and I've been doing this coming up on this year will be 10 years that I've been reselling um so I don't know if this is good or sad <laughs> that this is the first time at my highest profiting sale um but it was a pair of Christian Dior technical fabric nude I'm reading the the thing ver verbatim Christian Dior technical fabric nude D Dior ballerina flat mule that's what it's called this was featured in my um, life of a part-time reseller for sure. I told you how excited I was to find him. My cost of goods was $200. Yes, that is the highest I've ever paid for one single item was $200. I got these at Plato's Closet. These sold within one day of listing for full asking price of $700 on eBay crazy crazy oh I'm still so excited like when that came in I was ecstatic and of course it's eBay so people don't have to pay immediately even though I have that on all my stuff they still somehow don't feel like they have to pay immediately this person paid immediately like within five minutes I was so happy so anyways that was my highest cost of goods I profited because I also not only did I do um so I had the $200 but I also decided to get them authenticated on through Mercari which uses real authenticator for an, for $5. It was a $5 just insurance policy basically. Um they came back as authentic. My profit was $377.57. Now, when I sent them through eBay, they got delivered, all that kind of stuff got accepted um I did get an email that like I had not paid enough shipping for them which is interesting whatever but so they just they basically um took out like three dollars or something extra for shipping whatever so that brought my my profit down to, to 377.57 so happy oh, I would, I'm curious to know now what is how long have you been reselling and what has been the highest amount that you've paid for an item and what has been the highest profit that you've paid for it? Obviously the, those two might not be the same, but I, I am curious to see. So comment down below. All right, I also like to talk about my highest and lowest bundle sales too, because if you aren't familiar, I try, and I've, I've been doing this the past three months, two months since February of running this kind of consistent promotion of two, two items for $40. As long as they are priced $99 and below without any sales or promotions going on, then you can purchase two of them for $40. So I'm kind of encouraging a, a bundle promotion to get more bundles because before I wasn't getting a lot of bundles and my I, I want to sell a lot of things. So I'm trying to entice people to buy more than one item. So I like to review my bundle sales as well. So my lowest profiting bundle was this Ann Taylor gingham off the shoulder dress, super pretty. I actually purchased it for myself 
I like to say I outgrew it, um, not by style, but by size. So it was no longer fit me. Um, so is that, and then a torrid floral print wrap dress. This did sell for the two for 40 sale, sold on Poshmark for $40. My cost of goods was $16.35. And why it was so high is because I did purchase that dress for myself on Poshmark. I can't remember what the exact price was. I'm, I could scroll if I wanted to, but when it's my personal items, I just zero out the profit for that. So let's say I sold a personal item for $20. Well, with the fees and everything, it would come out to $16. So I just say $16 is the cost of goods, um, just because to zero out the profit. So I'm not getting taxed on things that I know I'm losing money on. Could I, could I go through and say I'm losing money on it? I could, but I'm not. This is just the easiest way that I've found. Um, so anyways, I profited $15.65 on that bundle. And then my highest bundle was also two for 40, but after you get, basically you have to at least bundle two items and then the additional items are just $20 each. So every item is $20 as long as it's bundled. So the highest, it was pair of Madewell Slim Boy Jeans, a Cheyenne Southwestern Tank, an Athleta Sundress, another pair of Madewell black coated skinny jeans and a pair of Lululemon wonder under leggings that kind of had the ruching on the um on the legs this sold on Poshmark for a hundred dollars my cost of goods was twenty three dollars forty four cents so I profited a fifty six fifty six on that and those are my highest and low lowest bundles and single items I should say so let's get to the notes of everything so not only do I like to kind of review my numbers I also like to decide what's working what's not working for me um so I guess what was working for me um this past month was I just I was continue to be consistent I hate saying that that's what you have to do, but that's what you have to do um, because I have a really hard time being consistent with multiple things in my life. So it is this, it's hard to stick to that, but I've noticed consistently within the past few months of continually getting higher and higher profits or at least staying at a profit that I um, am happy with. It's just being consistent. So with that, I'm listing most days. I won't tell you that I was able to list every single day. And when I say I'm listing, I do a combination of listing new things and relisting old things too. You know, with, with my job, um, there are days that I have to go into the office and I don't get home until later. So those are the days that I will just relist items because it's so much faster than risk, uh, listing new items, but I'm still doing it. And then also sending out offers consistently. So I've been doing this trial period where um, on Mondays, I will send out 30% offers to everybody with discounted shipping. Tuesdays is 40%. Wednesdays, I let it clear out. Thursdays is 50%. Fridays is 60%. And then I just started adding in 65% slash 70. Some days I, I change it, um, on Sundays. So I notice obviously on the higher discount are days that I get more, um, more sales. But again, I, it's kind of one of those things too, and I've, I think I said it last month, is just being being active in your closet, utilizing the tools that Poshmark gives you, um, utilizing the tools that other um, platforms give you. Like on eBay and on Depop, I do promotions on all my listings, which I haven't had the opportunity of doing that on Poshmark because I, I'm i not in the beta, beta, beta testing of the promotions, but. I will do it once they come. Um, so being consistent, using the tools that each platform gives you. Um, also my ongoing promotion. Again, I promote that hard. If people like something, um, you know, my Posh VA, another great tool that I use that I pay for, um, all of my referral codes will be down below too if you're ever interested in it. Posture VA automatically sends out a 20% discount on an item once somebody likes it. I also go in and I share my promotion listing to uh, to their bundle. I have automatic text that I just put in there and says, hey, take a peek at my bundle listing. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I'd rather have more people know about it than not. Um, so just having an ongoing promotion, promoting purchasing more than one item. 
um, which I guess that would mean that too you would probably want to have a wide variety of items within um, similar sizing, similar styles, all that kind of stuff. And then lastly, just I guess not being stingy when it comes to offers or counter offers. Um, so say for instance, somebody, and this happens a lot, I'll send out a 65% offer and then somebody still wants $5 off of that. Sure, have it. I'm still profiting off of it. Um, so. So that would also come into account how you're pricing your items. You know, you want to have a lot of wiggle room in your items. Um, so yeah, just don't be stingy. You're not a storage unit. And it looks like I'm a storage unit, but I'm not. Um, and to counterbalance that, I, I'm filming this on May 9th. I just had a really great really great sale which I will talk about later um, and next month but I cleared out a lot of items because I'm not a storage unit. I, I can't afford to be a storage unit. I need to like continuously process through inventory. So with that, that is my April's reseller recap going through all of my numbers, highs, lows, notes, all these things. I guess I didn't really give myself any like criticism. I'm not saying I wouldn't criticize myself, but I didn't really see too many things that it's like, oh, I could have done this better because I was pretty on top of stuff this month, I felt like. Um, I guess just continue to be consistent. That's all I can tell myself. Um, and to not be so hard on myself too. You know, this is, this is not my full-time job. Um, so it's okay to take a rest. That's probably what my criticism would be. It's okay to take a rest. It does not have to be go, go, go all of the time. Um, that is something I'm always, always continuously working on. Um, but anyways, that is what I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Comment down below. Like I said before, your, your highest cost of goods, your highest profit, how long you've been reselling, any questions you may have about reselling. I know there's some people who watch who, um, don't do this all the time so if you have any questions i'm definitely here to answer them for you like i said i've been on here for 10 years can't promise i know the answers but i can sure help you try um and if this is content that you enjoy i do reselling content i also do beauty content today is this is what today's look looks like i really really like this inner corner it's this like really pastel blue with an orange lid of course with mascara all over the lid because it wouldn't be a makeup video if that didn't happen um but all of the stuff that i'm wearing on my face will be listed down below you can also watch my april shop my stash video which has all of the makeup that i am currently using for this month um so that is a really long-winded say winded way of saying if you like reselling content and beauty content please make sure you subscribe uh leave a like on your way out and with that we'll see you in my next video bye